Hi everyone. Today I am in the garage here in uh, the Central Valley of California and I wanted to go ahead and do a video that I have thought about doing for quite a while. Um, but now since we're almost two years removed from the last video I uploaded about my Maytag washer and dryer, I thought uh, this would be a good long-term update. So here we are. Um, I just cleaned up both uh, the washer and dryer. Um, the washer just had some soap residue in various places and uh, the dryer was a little dusty. So we'll obviously focus on the washer here. Uh, the dryer is a dryer, works well matches the washer, it's big, um, gets clothes dry for the most part, and uh, really nothing remarkable there. So we'll walk over here to the washer, and uh, yes, I still have a sign on top, and uh, since the last video, two years ago, I've removed the stickers, but uh, fear not, they're just stuck to the side of the uh, dryer since they're just magnetic. And uh, we'll uh, look at the outside real quick, but it looks pretty good. A couple little scratches from, you know, things banging into it, but uh, no dents or dings or anything uh, really uh, notable. Uh, the inside is excellent. The stainless steel drum, no dings or dents or anything. So, it looks pretty much uh, as it did when it was brand new. And the only thing that happened to this, which is not the washer's fault, is if you look around here as I turn this, you'll see that the uh, if it pinches down. And that's because uh, when I moved from the previous house that I had these in, um, the movers put uh, a piece of foam and wedged it in there and I didn't use the washer and dryer for some time and unfortunately it deformed that plastic lip. But there's no uh, effect on performance. So in the last video I mentioned the paint and uh, how it easily scratches and that holds true but as you can see, I mean, yeah, you can see it just swirly scuffs um, but there's no areas where the paint has like worn through or anything like that. Uh, this is just dust. So, you know, clearly I would have preferred at least up here that they had enameled the washer and dryer, but the paint has held up better than I anticipated. On the dryer, same kind of deal, but I went ahead and put a clear plastic uh, little piece of acrylic on top of it. So if a laundry basket does get set on top, it sets on this and not the metal. So um, anyway, I just went ahead and cleaned the whole thing out. It was pretty easy. Um, but you know, if you use this, you're going to get dirt up inside of it. And there's still a little bit where I couldn't reach. And the agitator here, you can just pull this up and it will pop off and then you can clean out the inside here. So another thing I wanted to get into is, you know, a lot of my comments <laughs> on my video, I mean, probably the most commented thing was, oh, your washer and dryer aren't level. Well, um, now they are. So uh, and that's pretty close. You know, I, you know, I, I spent some time on this. It's, it's, it's level. So they, these washer and dryer are exactly the same height. Anybody who says they aren't either, uh, can't see or more likely they have their feet at different levels. So the washer and dryer have uh, different types of, of feet. So the, the washer has far more robust metal um, feet and then the, the dryer has these like plastic uh, corkscrew type of feet. So if the you put in the the feet on the on the dryer and you don't screw them into the same height as the washer the the washes the dryer is going to be either shorter or taller than than the washer is so if you want them to sit at the same level you got to make sure that you level out the feet 
and make sure obviously that the washer and dryer are level to the floor first and foremost. Uh, the other thing I wanted to get into is, oh yeah, you know, comments about how people are excited about 1970s technology. Well, I would um, say, sure, yeah, to this, to some degree, uh, 70s, <laughs> 1970s, 1980s, 1990s, and even maybe some early 2000s washers and dryers were overbuilt. But please go and find me an agitator that looks like this in something from the 1970s. I don't think you will find it. So clearly there was some computer modeling that went into the design of this agitator and that was not available in the 1970s. And neither were the sensors that uh, are present in the dryer that shuts the dryer off when it senses your clothes are dry. So please spare me the, this is the nothing different than something from the 1970s because it's just frankly not true. Another complaint that I had on uh, the last video was just sort of the panel fitment. And unfortunately, you know, I haven't, I still haven't gotten around to fixing this, but I imagine it's just as simple as, you know, bending this lip up a little higher so that it fits in better. But unfortunately, these screws are these, uh, they're tamper resistant and I have yet to come across a set um, just in passing that has that middle area cut out and is the right size at the same time. So I think what the plan is today is I will do a load of towels, just uh, some junky towels that I use out here in the garage. Um, nothing too remarkable. And I'll uh, run through it. I'll uh, set up the tripod and let this run through a full cycle. And uh, then you'll be able to see how this functions two years out and make your own sort of decisions about if this is something you want. Oh, we have something in the dryer, but uh, the inside of the dryer is unremarkable other than some discoloration on the metal uh, vents in the back from the heat. And I would assume some lint that has come into contact with that grill. Um, nothing's been replaced. I've had to have no service on either of these. There's uh, no real wear inside of the dryer other than that discoloration. Um, nothing that I see that would need to be serviced at any point soon. Um, the only issues I've had with this washer being out of balance is just when you have like a really bulky towel in there and then maybe just one towel and then some other different items that are lighter. It, it tends to get out of balance at that point. Um, but as long as you do your laundry with similar types of laundry in that load, you shouldn't have any problems, which is what I do anyway. Most of the time. So I guess the last thing I want to cover is obviously there's the comparison between uh, this set and the Speed Queen set. So if we go back to when I made the last review in 2019, uh, it was this set versus the TR series. And as we know, the, the, the Speed Queen screwed up their tried and true technology by trying to go high efficiency, like granola, uh, single, single speed, no transmission, or I think it, there is a transmission in, in those units. And that's kind of the problem. Uh, so anyway, the end result was that the clothes you put in, were ne they didn't turn over. They just kind of got swished around and they don't get clean. And so even now to this day with revisions in place for those TR units, they rank pretty well overall in consumer reports, but the cleaning um, scores are below average. Which, I mean, that's the whole point of washer and dryer. And the problem with consumer reports nowadays is that they put far too much 
like in, like they put far too much uh weight for things like quietness and efficiency and you know features the whole point of having a washer and dryer is washing your clothes and then drying them so in the consumer reports they also have the the classic the tc series now which is the return uh speed queen's return to the original mechanism so the drum and the agitator move independently against each other causing the clothes to turn over much like how this washer functions and now that washer ranks lower than the TR series, which is the problem because that washer has above average cleaning, but below average noise and below average features, etc. But what's more important features, noise, or actually cleaning your clothes. Noise doesn't matter in my instance. And for most people, because your hookups are in your garage. So put it in your garage. If you have a problem, add a little insulation to your wall. Not that hard. Um, so anyway, and, and frankly, you know, I, uh, I sure could have gone out by now and picked up the TC series and maybe I'll do that just to compare. Um, and, uh, I got some room in here. I could run two sets of washers and dryers and given how many views my videos have had, it might be worth it. But, uh, the, the biggest thing now that would stop me from doing that is frankly that you know, somebody who sells washers and dryers for a living put out puts out a uh, a honest review, like uh, like Eugene at Lorraine's, and all of a sudden he can no longer be a dealer of Speed Queen because he has an honest assessment of their product. So, of course, we we want we prefer to buy made in America items, but uh, you know that I'm not going to put that above you know, a company that does unethical things, suppressing a poor product that you made and, and, uh, and punishing somebody by, uh, who's, who's made an honest review is I think the, the number one sin that a, a company can commit. And so, you know, uh, unless the, there was some sort of, uh, assurance or apology put out to Eugene, I don't think I could review uh, one of their products, even if my review would be positive and probably sell some washers and dryers as, as my previous videos on these two uh, units have definitely done. I paid with my, I paid these with my own money. Maytag, uh, I've never been in contact with Maytag. Uh, I've never been paid for these videos. I've never made any money off of them, but I think it's important that in our very disposable economy, this age that we're living in, that, that items that are built to last and uh, fulfill a need in the market that maybe doesn't make the most financial sense, but is what the people want are, are promoted. And I hope that, uh, that these videos uh, given, given honest uh, review and um, answers, answer questions for people that are looking at these units. So I'll stop talking now and uh, I will load these up and start them and start the washer and uh, I'll pick up there. Okay, here we go. We have uh, the uh, washer full of towels. I've got it on the deep water setting for bulky and towels. I'll go ahead and turn the temperature up to hot just so that you can see the water, you'll be able to see the steam, I assume. I'm not going to do any extra options, but on this unit you have pre-soak, extra rinse, and then pre-soak and extra rinse. Um, the water for hot, I think, is capped to about 115 degrees. The water coming out of my uh, water heater is 125. So... You're going to hear some cold coming on and off, I believe, as this turns on and goes through its cycle. Um, for this purpose, I've gone ahead and, for the purposes of this demonstration, I've gone ahead and disabled the lid latch. Don't ask me how to do it. If you can't figure it out by looking at the machine, you have no business doing it. So I don't want comments. I've got like 20 comments asking how to do this. 
So, uh, other than that, happy to answer questions, of course, and comments. But please don't ask me about leveling these units or the lid latch. Those two things I'm tired of answering. Hope you understand. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start this now. Now we're nice and centered. So as this fills, it spins around to get all of the items in, in the washer wet. So they get smaller in size, and I think it also helps balance out the load. Because it's a deep water setting, you should feel, see the water line fill up to almost the top. So you should be able to see the steam starting to rise up. That laser is my uh, temperature gun, and once the water fills up a little bit, I'll, I'll measure the temperature of the water. My water heater is kicked on at this point. I have one of those hybrid water heaters that has the uh, heat pump and uh, also conventional electric element for heating the water.
as you can see, hopefully, I'll move this because I can't see if this is in focus or not, but the water is about 115 degrees. So it's regulated to about that temperature. It's actually getting slightly warmer as we go. Not slightly cooler. So yeah, that, that, that was in the manual and I'm pretty sure that the, the regula regulation is, is uh, at 115. Okay, so now as this starts, there's there's one bright colored towel in there. And just watch that towel and you can see why something like the Speed Queen TR series can't clean as well as this washer does. Because you will see no turnover with those machines. So right now it's the purple towel at the top. And you can see it's getting swirled around and now it's gonna get dragged under and you won't see it. is what actually cleans your clothes or your towels or your bedding is that agitation. When you don't have agitation, you have swishing. And swishing doesn't do anything. <clears throat> I think in the last video I did, I used too much soap. So this time around, I used less soap. And I think I got the uh, level proper for this video because I know that if I don't, I will get comments about it. Just like I would have gotten comments had I not cleaned the uh, washer and dryer. video a little bit hopefully it's good to see now. And now you're getting a slightly different actuation which is once again something that would be impossible in a machine that does not have a microprocessor. In it. you can definitely see that the water is murkier than when it started. So clearly, these were dirty towels. So the other thing I wanted to touch on while we're going through this is the, uh, this, this model is the NV, Bees and Victor WP 575GW. Lowe's carries the MVWP 576KW. Now, this is it's the same unit, but the one at Lowe's has a inferior warranty because they want you to pay for their service coverage. So they must have worked out a deal with Maytag to have a slightly worse warranty so that they continue to sell their crappy uh, service contracts that you don't need if you just buy the 575. So the 575, this unit, has a five-year full parts and labor warranty. And then 10 years on the parts. 
and I believe the 576 has like either two or three years. It might even be one year. And uh, it, it's definitely less though, so that you buy their $200 service contract. So the machine I think is slightly cheaper, but then at the end, in order to get the warranty that you get with this machine, you end up spending $100 or $150 more. So I would recommend going online, searching for this model. I bought this one from AJ Madison. I mean, in my opinion, not a great retailer, but they got the machine here undamaged. Uh, I think there are a few options at this point. There weren't many when I bought this machine because it was new. But this, since this machine is pretty popular at this point, given the views on my videos, um, there should be more options of, of retailers. And you know, also be sure to look at local local retailers you may have in your area. Um, because one of the things with having one of these shipped is it getting damaged in transit. We all know how uh, uh, freight is treated. So if you can buy one of these locally, I would recommend it. Water is now at about 109, so it's cooled slightly. And I mean, most of that is likely due to the fact that I have the lid open. One of the complaints that I, I tend to see on this unit is um, that it's noisy. And you know, I'm, I'm convinced that either people are just so sensitive, so, so, so sensitive, or Speed Queen's uh, fanatical fan base is going around and making reviews up. Because this unit is of average loudness. I mean, we're sitting here and I'm, I'm talking to you with the lid open, and it's not that loud. It, it just frankly isn't. And even if this was inside my house, in a cabinet, it would not bother me. And it would likely not bother you either. I would imagine that if you're going from an HE machine that this could be louder. But I also would tell you that your clothes likely haven't been getting clean the last five years or however long your cheap little machine lasted. Okay, now we're gonna start draining. And that click was the drum unlocking. 
or the, the latch unlocking for the lid, I believe. Or perhaps maybe it was just actually locking because it's about to go into a spin. So this thing drains fast. It's got a pretty powerful pump in it, which given this is a commercial washer makes sense. So, so this is identical to the Maytag MAT series, except it has a few more options that somebody would want to have in their home in terms of using a washer, but it, it's the same. It comes out in the same line, it has the same parts. The only different difference is I believe the commercial is enameled and this is painted. So, um, and obviously no coin slot. But when you're running a laundromat, you want to you want to get things done as fast as possible. So you'll notice that uh, this has among the fastest, from start to finish, the fastest clean cycle of any washer and dryer on the market. So it drains fast, it spins fast, it doesn't waste time. Um, because if you're in a laundromat, you own a laundromat, you want as many machines free as possible so that you can maximize your profit. Which is great, especially if you have a large family and you have a lot of clothes to wash and dry. the unit makes when the pump has uh, run out of water to drain. And here we go. So this is the point where you don't want to put your arm in it. Because it will get spinning up to 700 RPM, I believe. Now this is a pretty heavy load. I mean, some of these towels are heavy. And this is well within the tolerances of the springs. Go ahead and rinse. Now, as we're kind of going here, I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and start the dryer just so you can get an idea of the noise um, of both units together. Now you can, as you can hear, there's a zipper in there plunking around. That is not the dryer itself.
it just it wasn't quite a rinse cycle. I'm not sure you can turn off, but um, it annoys me quite a lot because it will just continue to cycle through until the wrinkle control um, timer runs out. So it'll spin a little bit, keep the clothes from settling so they wrinkle, and then buzzes and does that repeatedly until you come out and turn it off before it times out. Now clearly it's soapier, which uh, I guess this might be the actual time when it really does its cleaning. All of you watching who intend to make some kind of snarky comment, please remember that I've stood here this entire cycle for your benefit so that you can make an informed decision about the washer and dryer you may be interested in purchasing. The only time I left was to, to go get my temperature gun, but I've stayed here with you the entire time. So most of my videos are product reviews of different kinds. I'll review vintage electronics, I'll review generator, I have a generator review. Um, I reviewed my cat. Um, so I'd appreciate it if, if you guys like well-made things to go check out the other videos. Um, kind of go through spurts of up uploading and, and uh, Sometimes I do, and other times I'm busy and I can't. But if you go ahead and like this video, if it was uh, helpful for you, I'd appreciate it. Subscribe. And I think there's that little bell icon thing that'll alert you if I post a new video. I'd appreciate that as well. I'm not getting paid for this, but you know, when you put effort into a video, you definitely want people to see it. So 
I think that's natural. And as always, ask questions in the comments. I'm happy to answer them. But uh, you know, definitely look at the comments before you ask a question. If, if, uh, or go to my previous videos because a lot of questions have already been answered, and they start becoming duplicates. And I try to answer them all, but uh, at a certain point, I can't answer a question for the tenth time. <laughs> Retailer interested in uh, providing me units to review, I'm happy to, to do so. Whether that's a Speed Queen or a, you know, another brand. If it's a Maytag and, and uh, it's one of these units, it's probably not going to be better than, than this unit, so um, I probably would pass. <laughs> Uh, you know, of a more boutique brand that uh, uses high-grade parts, then I'd certainly be interested in working out some kind of arrangement. after the rinse, which is why I knew that I used too much. reason why your lid lock exists because if your two-year-old climbed into this thing right now they would die so before you go and disable this for your ease of adding laundry later think about what would happen if their little child put their arm in this right now or your cat fell in it or your dog there's about probably 20 to 30 pounds of towels in this unit right now, and it's spinning very fast. That's why it's a well, pretty large engine to spin it at this speed. filling up again. The machine thinks it needs to rinse again.
So the light that is illuminated right now is the final spin light. So it's getting there, it's close. But it is indeed filling up again with water. We're about 30 minutes in now to this cycle. I think I talked for about five minutes before I actually started it. I think it somehow has an ability to sense this, which maybe, again, I've used more soap than I should have. But I think it just leads to a longer cycle time until it's satisfied that it's gotten all the soap out.
couple interesting tidbits in the manual. The, uh, the deep water cycles provide a higher temperature um, than the normal. So as you can see at the start of that, you, it, it, it was slightly out of balance, but as it got going, it was able to keep, uh, keep in balance. This is a very full load. This is probably higher than what they'd recommend you go. But I wanted to give it something a little abusive for it to handle. So that two seconds of the drum banging around, um, it's just fine. did was it sort of self-balanced. There's a cycle um, that you can access uh, for the, it's called the clean washer cycle. It should be used one or two times a year. Check the tech sheet for access to the clean washer cycle in the diagnostic test mode. years of use to reduce, reduce the risk of hose failure. Periodically inspect and replace inlet hoses if bulges, kings, cuts, wear, or leaks are found. When replacing your inlet hoses, mark the date of replacement on the label with a marker. leave the washer lid open between uses to help dry out the washer and prevent the buildup of odor causing residue.
spin and you can see that the inside is, is moving a little bit, which is normal. But the outside of the washer is very still. It's not moving. You can look at the, uh, you can't really see it from the view, but the distance between the washer and the dryer is not deep. There's no deviation of that. Again, this is why your lid lock exists. I'm standing about two feet away from it right now and I can feel the the air coming off of the, the drum like a fan. And this video is uh, 60 frames per second so it should give you a pretty good idea of the speed. two minutes. gonna go take a vacation as somebody who has been through water lines breaking while I was on vacation this is good advice to follow for just your general everything in your house if you're gonna be gone for a while go around your house turn off all of your valves including turn off the water supply washer and dryer. I, I just go and turn off my main if I'm going to be gone for two weeks because there's nothing worse than coming home to or getting a call from a neighbor saying you have water coming out of your garage. It's a good way to cut your vacation short. comment I got recently about where you put the different liquids. So this one's labeled liquid chlorine bleach. This is where bleach goes. The middle of the agitator is where your fabric softener goes. 
and then you add in your detergent before you fill the clothes in, which is what I did. So you pour in your 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 detergent in the bottom, then add your laundry. According to the instructions, do not use more than one cup of liquid chlorine bleach. And do not pack or source items into the washer. As I mentioned in a previous video, at least in California, make sure that the hoses that you're using don't interfere with the function of the washer. I mentioned this in a previous video. When I bought uh, this unit, I didn't want to use the supplied rubber hoses because they're rubber and they're more prone to break than the steel braided ones. However, when I used the steel braided hose, I wasn't aware that there was a flow restrictor inside. And because this isn't an Energy Star super efficient washer, the flow into the unit exceeded the restrictor on the hoses. So what happened is I wasn't getting hot water. The alternative to that is just to use the rubber hose and just keep an eye on those hoses. Or make sure that if you use a steel braided hose that it doesn't have a flow restrictor in it. Uh, the flow restrictor is there to, uh, it's not really a flow restrictor, it's more of a burst preventer. So if a certain amount of water goes through the line that the hose believes is too much, it will mechanically stop the flow of water so that you don't have a water leak. So if you've uh, sat here and watched this whole uh, video, I hope that it was informative. Do go ahead and ask questions if you have any. Would love your feedback and comments. And uh, please go and like this video, subscribe, and make sure you click, ding the bell, as they say, to uh, make sure you're alerted when I post uh, new videos. That's it. So as uh, maybe you'll see here if I can show you. Gotta tighten this. The uh, the cycle is done. So about 50 minutes, 49, 48, 49 minutes that it took to go through that whole load. And. Uh, so I'll leave it at that. Once again, thanks for watching. Actually, first of all, before I, before I go, let's go ahead and grab one of these towels. Pretty light, it's obviously still wet, but it's not uh, 30 pounds as if it would be. And this is uh, definitely, uh, you can't, you know, you can't wring any water out of it. It's just damp. So that means when you put it in your dryer, it uh, dries faster and uh, uses less energy. All right, once again, thanks for watching.